What if I told you that there was something you could get, something that you could add to your favorite handheld PC or mini PC to instantly turn it into something amazing? Well, it's true. Don't believe me? Well, check this out. Oh yeah. Uh, what, what's that? You don't care about a USB fan? You want to see a graphics card that you can plug into any USB 4 device and get desktop gaming performance? Um, okay. I, I guess I could show you that. Weirdo. Hi there, how you doing? I'm Tech Dweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. I'm a big fan of adding things to things to make them better. Lots of devices over the years have had expansion capabilities, but it's not nearly as common these days. But there's a, a whole category of devices that are purposefully less powerful these days, not because we don't know how to make them more powerful. We put efficient APUs in them and don't let them get too crazy with the performance because battery efficiency is more important than all out performance. Mini PCs have a similar constraint, but they are held back by their physical size and cooling potential. So what are we to do? Are we stuck with this lackluster high-end gaming performance on our handhelds and mini PCs? Should we just give up being gamers and go find something better to do with our lives, like learn a new skill or be creative? Of course not, because we have things like this. The One X GPU. Plug in your favorite device to this thing and boom, you turn it from a modest little power efficient device into something Thing with gaming PC levels of performance. This is my first external GPU and I had no idea what it would be like to use it. But after using this for a few days, I am excited to make this video because freaking heck yeah, this is seriously cool tech worth considering for the right person and the right use case. And you want to know if that's you and probably don't want to sit through this whole review to find out, right? You just want a simple, straightforward answer. Okay, fine. I'll give it to you. There you go. Enjoy that. This thing is a super interesting thing. It's, it's a graphics card that you can add to your device to upgrade it. You just plug it in and you're off to the races, literally. However, there are some drawbacks that might be a deal breaker for some people, which we'll talk about. But first, we need to see what we get in the box. Oh, by the way, this was sent to me by What Geek. Then they sell a ton of stuff like keyboards and mouses and handhelds and mini PCs and eGPUs and a bunch of other stuff. So go buy this from them if you want one. There's a link to their store and their YouTube channel in the doodad below. And they gave me a discount code and that is down there too. You can save 10% on this thing. The box goes with 1X's color scheme, black and orange, which is the best color scheme. In the box, we get a love letter. Under that is the thing, uh, which we'll look at in a bit. And then we have our power brick. This is straight up the biggest wall wart that I've ever seen. Then under here, we get a USB-C to C cable. And if you're using this thing via Thunderbolt, then this is all you need. Yeah, but if you want to use the Oculink connection, which we'll talk about, you'll need an Oculink cable. So the bundle comes with that and an extra USB-C to C cable for some reason, and a nice sturdy case to carry the GPU and the power supply and the cables. Packed inside this thing is the Radeon 7600M XT, which is a mobile variant of the 7600 XT. It's 6 nanometers, supports DX12 Ultimate, hardware ray tracing, variable rate shading, all that good stuff. We get 8 gigabytes of dedicated GDDDDR6 VRAM. The base TDP is 100 watts, but you can toggle a turbo mode that ups that to 120 watts. There's more info on the What Geek website uh, if you want to know more. Link below. The charger itself is big, but that's because it's a 330 watt GAN charger. This thing can provide 100 watts of pass-through charging or power for any device that's connected via USB-C, in addition to powering the GPU. So you can fast charge any handheld or even power a mini PC right from the eGPU. On the top, we have a vent hole for the fan, more ventilation on the front with some Smexy RBG stylings. On the other side, we have a power button, turbo button to toggle the 120 watt TDP mode, and an RBG button to change those RBGs. And we have two USB-A holes rated for USB 3.2. 
Around back is where things get interesting because there's a ton of connectivity back here. We have a power plug hole, one USB-C 4.0 hole for connecting and charging any USB-C device, an Oculink hole, which we'll talk about, and two HDMI holes, and two DisplayPort holes, and an Ethernet hole rated at one gigabit. And then underneath, uh, this is cool, there's a magnetic door that pops off to reveal an NVMe drive slot. So you can pop one of those in here to add actual game storage to this thing. So with all this connectivity, power delivery, internal storage, I, I guess it should be clear, but this is more than just a GPU. It's a full docking station. So you can set this up on your desk and leave it there and then you come along with your handheld PC or a mini PC, plug it in with that one single USB-C cord and now you're in fully docked mode with all the extra storage and power that this thing provides. It extends my screen, the GPU is detected and I can start up a game and play my game. Then when I need to leave and go do adult things like go to the bank or the carburetor store or wherever adults go, I can just grab my toy and hit the road. I get handheld performance when I'm oot in a boot, and I get desktop PC performance when I'm at home. The biggest downside for me, my biggest gripe with this thing, is the noise level. It's not loud all the time, Yeah, usually when you're not gaming or playing lightweight games it's just like a quiet hum, but when you're pushing it, especially when you have the 120 watt turbo mode enabled, yeah, it gets going. However, when I tuck it away, like if I put it on the little table under my desk or off to the side behind my de desktop PC or even behind the monitor, I don't notice it nearly as much. That's what I'm planning on doing in the long run. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. My face reveal. And wh what? You don't care about a face reveal and you just want to see performance benchmarks for the One X GPU? Are, uh, are you sure? Oh, alright then. Well, I guess let's do that. The test subject today is going to be this One X X1 that I reviewed recently on my channel. Check out the review for this thing, link below. I figured that this would be the best choice because it's another One X device and it's got the latest and greatest 8840U processor which has solid performance even on its own and it's got both USB 4 and an Oculink port so I can test every possible scenario. Starting with the native built-in graphics of the One X X1. Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is going to be our test subject. I'll, I'll show you other games in a bit, but I want to use this one to compare the different scenarios. The One X X1 actually has solid performance out of the box because it's an 8840U device, which is top of the line for APUs right now. So the difference between internal graphics and this external GPU will be even more drastic on less powerful devices like the ROG Ally or lower end mini PCs. We ended up with a 40 FPS on average frame rate with these settings, but let's see what an eGPU can do to take that to the next level. This test is with the eGPU connected via USB-C 4.0. Same in-game settings as before, but whoa baby, look at that. Freaking 110 FPS on average. This GPU is definitely enough to go higher on the settings, and it does have hardware ray tracing. Or if you had a 4K TV and you wanted to play your One X X1 or your ROG Ally or your Lenovo Legion Go on it, this thing can definitely cover your buns in that regard. And now we're going to try it with the Oculink. The difference is noticeable, but not crazy. We're getting 127 FPS on average now. Which is great, it's definitely worth using Oculink if you have an Oculink device, but considering that USB 4 isn't a proprietary connection, it works on almost any USB 4 enabled handheld or mini PC, I don't think you need to feel like you're missing out if you don't have Oculink. However, word on the street is that some games benefit from Oculink more than others. Check out this video by friend of the channel Game Tech Talk if you want to see how a bunch of different games compare in each scenario. And now I want to see one more thing. This is a little bonus test. I want to see how it does with ultra ray tracing enabled. Is this 7600 MXT powerful enough to give us good performance with ray tracing? Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. 76 FPS on average. What about 4K? So let's go with the same settings as before. No ray tracing, but 4K resolution. And here we got 44 FPS on average. So 4K is doable if you're okay with sub 60 FPS. And it's cool that we can achieve this at high settings in games like this. And you'd probably be able to hit 60 FPS if you tweak the settings or made use of upscaling, of course. And then uh, to round things off, I wanted to test a few more games. And since I tested a few games during my One X X1 review, uh, now we have two data points for each of these. Here we have 
Doom Eternal. This game, I aim for high FPS. I like it to look as good as it can while being well over 100 FPS. And we achieve that here. This is 1080p with the Ultra Nightmare preset. I ended up with 110 FPS on average. For comparison, without an eGPU, I needed to run at 800p with low settings to achieve similar performance. So yeah, this is a freaking huge upgrade. Next up we have the Witcher 3. This is 1080p ultra settings with no ray tracing. I actually ended up getting 115 FPS on average. I probably should have enabled ray tracing actually because I totally have the headroom. On a game like The Witcher 3, I'm totally fine playing at 60 FPS. And since this is more of a sightseeing game, I'd rather get the game looking as good as it can. For contrast, without the eGPU, I had to run with balanced FSR low settings and I only got 55 FPS on average like that. And then we have Cyberjunk 2077. Again, sticking with 1080p, but we're using the ultra preset here and looking very nice. We actually ended up getting 85 FPS on average. Without the 1X GPU, I had to run with performance FSR, low settings, and I only managed 32 FPS on average like that. We're more than double that here, at way higher settings. And finally, this is Elden Ring. Honestly, I only tossed this in because I've been playing it more and I wanted to see how it ran on this setup. This is 1080p with the max preset. The game has a 60 FPS cap and we're right there at 60, only occasionally dipping down during super busy moments. I, I did try it with ray tracing and I was getting under 50 FPS, so I just went without. So, uh, but pretty cool, right? A desktop performance on your handheld PC or mini PC with no drawback whatsoever, right? Well, no. I don't know who told you that, but they're an idiot. There is a drawback, and that's the price. This thing is 750 bucks. However, what geek has made a discount code for me to share with you. So if you use the code tech 10, you can save 10%, which brings it down to 680 bucks. Free worldwide shipping too, by the way. That is still a lot of money, no question, but consider what you get here. A 7600 XT GPU is about 330 bucks. Then, what does a dock with Thunderbolt 4 and built-in NVMe storage cost? The cheapest one I could find was 140 bucks. Most of them are like 200 bucks. And then, what about a power supply to power this stuff? If you get an external GPU enclosure, which aren't cheap, you're still going to have to provide your own small form factor power supply. This is a 320 watt GAN charger. And the cheapest one of those that I could find is 70 bucks. Not to mention that none of the those docks or devices or anything support Oculink, which is superior to Thunderbolt and should demand a higher price. So when you consider everything that you actually get, the price isn't so outlandish. It's, it's definitely not cheap. It's a luxury item to give you an enhanced experience, but considering that this can turn a handheld PC or a mini PC into something with the gaming chops of a full desktop PC, I think this is actually a pretty compelling offer. If you're looking for that or for something to attach to your TV so you can dock your handheld and get high refresh rate, high settings, or, or 4K resolution gaming, this is the choice. This is what you would want. I can't say if it's worth it for you, but I can say that if you need needed what this does, you'd have a hard time getting an experience like this for less than what this is going for. It's an interesting toy, an expensive, interesting toy. And if you want one, there's a link in the doodad below. And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this helpful. I'm glad I finally have an eGPU to do some testing for handhelds and mini PCs. So uh, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see running on this sort of setup for the next time that I show this off. And click the subscribe button if you haven't yet. And the like button, of course. It costs you nothing. It tells YouTube that I'm doing something right. And it makes it more likely that we'll see each other again. So you'd be pretty stupid not to if you think about it. And that's it from me for today. I'm TechTweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.